So let's talk about today's session. Um, the background to this is uh, I became really interested in digital back when the idea of being a social media paid expert, when I met Tanil Bentley over in uh, WA, and she said, yeah, I'm a professional social media person. And I almost fell off my chair with, with um, internal laughing because I, it just didn't seem possible at that point in the early, very early, early like 2010, 2011, that that could be a full-time job but how much egg on your face can you can you wear in one sitting because since then digital has become gone from strength to strength and it's gone through a whole bunch of evolutions and it's interesting um i often think about when we talk about financial services firms and particularly financial services firms that i work with which tends to be you know at the cold face um the 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 the, the leap towards digital uh has been a bit slower and in particular, the digital, digital paid advertising has also been slower. Like I've heard a number of different digital marketing experts from internally within the industry turn around and say, people don't look for financial advisors on Facebook. But the reality is these last couple of years, I think a lot of uh, that has been started to be challenged. I think much like in the early 2000s, the idea of jumping into uh, uh, an online store and giving them your credit card was akin to inviting uh, you know, a horde of pirates into your home to take whatever they wanted. It's evolved. Whereas now, I think most of us, if not we're if we're not completely un, you know, comfortable with shopping online, it's actually preferred method for for a lot of us over uh, certain periods. And I think paid advertising uh, for advice is as similarly, it started to sort of gain greater and greater traction. Here's the thing about this, though. I, I've spoken to so many people in in the, uh, in this space. I'm just gonna, Jen, if you can just make sure we're managing mutes there for me. Thank you. Um, I've spoken to so many people in this space and I genuinely believe the number of people who understand those two fields, digital advertising in particular, paid advertising and financial services, the proposition, you can count on, on probably one hand. But I connected with Alana at the tail end of last year. I was introduced by, by, a, by, a, by a client and the moment I sort of obviously did a bit of background research before I chatted with, but the moment I spoke to her, I just got this overwhelming sense of somebody who really knew their stuff, not somebody who was representing themselves, not somebody who, you know, their, their main focus or their main strength was marketing themselves, but someone who knew this uh, and knew what they could do and knew what they couldn't do. And, and the results that she's achieved uh, across a wide range of things have, have been really impressive. So I wanted to have this discussion. Firstly, because I think um, the, the insight you're going to get into sort of what to do and what not to do and where to focus and what this is really about and what to ignore is, is value. But also, Alana's got an incredible story, like really, really phenomenal story with a background in financial services. And um, honestly, every time I uh, sit down and talk to her, I learn and I just kind of get more and more insight into how she's got to where she is. And she's been through a whole bunch of stuff, which... Um, We'll give you a sense of why she's successful at it. So with that preamble over and done with, Alana, are you there? Hopefully this tech works. I'm here. I'm there we go. Turning on my mic and camera. Hopefully the uh, tech gods are in our favor. Yeah, I'm just going to turn my spotlight off so we can do a bit of this. There we go. Welcome this morning. Um, Thank you. Hopefully, yeah. There we go. Oh, let's get Alex off. Jen, if you can just manage that feed. Um, where are you now? What's going on? Let's get your camera feed up and running. That now we've lost your camera. There we are. Yes, Happy maybe days. I just have to talk to, for the camera to be shown. Yeah, I think we tried this dual spotlight thing, which um, Jim, we're going to cut this out, but um, which isn't really working. So it's going to be a talk. We'll just let it go. We'll get, we'll get into the conversation. Um, thanks very much for joining us, Dan. So sorry for all the hicks and whatnot that have been go going on that, uh, in the preamble to this. All good. Um, and um, Thank you for having me. Whereabouts are you right now? Like, where are we talking to you from? From Sydney. Right. Yep. Our eastern suburbs, just near Bondi. Please don't hold it against me. I know many people uh, have, an, have an allergic reaction to Bondi. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I used to say that I used to live in Bondi for a year. Bondi Road is, is the steepest road in, in the world because it's just so hard to get up and out of Bondi. And once you're in there, you kind of, you're stuck in the gravity well. But um, pretty much. Very nice. I understand, like you, we were talking the other day, you, you've, you've taken up surfing like four years ago. Is that correct? It is true. And uh, I'm fresh out of the water this morning. So you're, you're getting my, my post surf glow. Oh, nice. I tried <laughs> surfing. I was so bad at it. Um, oh, really bad. bad. Yeah, it's, it's so much fun. So for those who don't know you and don't know, can you give us a bit of the high level of kind of uh, who you are, what you do, who you for, do it for and, and, and all that sort of stuff? Sure. Um, so essentially I'm a paid traffic, uh, 
I don't really like to use the term expert, but I've been running paid traffic for clients and now I teach people how to run paid traffic campaigns uh, profitably so that they don't need to hire an agency. Uh, so I do it for all sorts of types of businesses and that's pretty much just because I've worked with so many different types of businesses. My husband always teases me that I, you know, bring all these great stories to, to dinner parties because all these weird and wonderful niches that I've worked that I've worked in that I genuinely find them fascinating. So what's, um, what's the weird like give us a couple of weird ones that you worked in. I'd love Oh that. my God. Like where do I begin? Like just like so micro niche. Like I had one client that had a membership site just for US history teachers. Wow. selling less lesson plans and all that kind of stuff and this guy killed it um i've sold like grass seeds online i didn't know anyone would buy grass seeds i didn't know you could um oh god you, you're getting me on the spot now i probably yeah. should have should have prepared some um some people sold like scrapbooking book or something wow i mean honestly i like you name it i've done it it's it's amazing to me that I mean that's the one of the things about the internet, right? It's the the the, the long tail thing, but you you can find some really interesting ways that people don't just make a living, but they make really good money, and you just go, how the heck? It's incredible. Totally. I had one guy who sold rollerblade wheels on the bottom of an office chair, and I thought, oh my god, how many people are going to buy that? Turns out, a lot of people. Wow. Okay. There you go. Like a ten million wonderful. dollar business. Rollerblades for office chair. That's awesome. That's actually, I can see why. I can see why. Um, and you've also done some work more recently. You've started working with financial services firms more and more. Is that correct? Yeah. I've, I Look, to be honest, I used to, when I did a lot of agency work, I used to specialize in Google ads for dentists. Um, it's basically a local business kind of strategy uh, yeah. that I've just now applied to financial services. And I guess, you know, based on, you know, what I heard you say about me, I do have a financial services background. Yep. So I have an innate understanding of the business. I was in funds management. I was in wealth management. Um, so you can apply those, you know, <laughs> the knowledge that I got a while ago to common digital marketing strategies now and it's the same principles. It's just applying it to a different niche. So let, I, I'm getting, before we jump into that, I'm, I'm, I want to talk about your background because I think it's, I've, my impression is it's got a lot to do with why you have the skill set you have and also you understand financial services better than most. Like when you talk about paid advertising, can you just be very specific about what that is and what that isn't? Yes. Most people don't realize it. If I you know, go to a dinner party, let's say, and say, so, well, Alana, what do you do? I, I do paid ads. They're like, oh, that's the like the organic, you know, trying to Im improve your your rankings on Google. It's like, no, actually, it's the, the little block of text ads that are above the organic listings in Google um, that you pay to when only somebody clicks on your ad. So you choose what you want your ad to show for and you only pay when somebody uh, actually clicks on your ad. So nobody clicks, you don't pay anything. So that's why it's called PPC, which right. stands for pay per click marketing. Obviously, okay. those kinds of text ads are just one form of digital advertising uh, on the Google network. You can also do what's called display advertising, which are the banners on other people's websites like Sydney Morning Herald or The Age or yep. lots of high traffic websites. You've got YouTube, which is its own beast of an ad platform. And you've got yep. Google Shopping, which are the e-commerce ads. And that's just the Google ad platform. Then you've got Facebook ads, which is Instagram. So basically any kind of traffic that you pay for is within my wheelhouse. Okay. And the, I mean, the display stuff, I, it's, it's kind of the stalker stuff, right? Where you, you feel like someone's following you around the internet. Whereas the, the adverts you're talking about, which is the one that usually got sponsored next to them. Is that correct? Correct. Beautiful. So when you talk about stalking, that's, that's a jargon called retargeting that somebody who's come to your website before and then because of that then the ads follow you but yep. you don't have to just do that form of display advertising you can you know show ads on Sydney Morning Herald to people who've never been to your website Got you it. can show ads in the news section on the Sydney Morning Herald if that's where your um, you think your target customer hangs out online, you can have a nice ad there. So yeah, it's not just the stalking component. That's sort of warm audiences versus completely cold audiences. Okay, cool. Um, so let's uh, like, give me the background because I know we've spoken about it, but you didn't start off doing this at all, did you? 
No, I didn't. It's been uh, quite the journey. And honestly, if you would have told me, you know, 15 years ago, I would be here. There's absolutely no way I would have believed you. <laughs> I, um, I did a science degree, actually. I'm like a computer person, but I was always fascinated with finance. So I did an undergrad degree in science and then I went back and did a master's in finance because I wanted to work in financial services. And so I worked in financial services for a number of years. I worked for some pretty, pretty big name businesses, one of them Goldman Sachs, worst experience of my life. Sorry, I probably shouldn't say that. Um, I lasted 11 months uh, before I just, yeah, was not, not a fun experience. Um, but I really loved financial services, actually. I was genuinely fascinated by financial markets. Yep. I worked as a data analyst uh, for Dimensional, was my last job. Yep. Um, and I worked there for, I think, two, two, two to three years, I'm not sure, before I decided to have a family, basically. And I was pregnant with my first child um, when I was working for Dimensional. And you know, contrary to, you know, the classic entrepreneurial story of, you know, I dreamed of starting my own business and, you know, unleashing myself from the shackles of corporate, like that wasn't me at all, actually. I loved my job. I loved the people that I work with. They were easily the smartest people I've ever met. They were all like one of my boss had written a math textbook, like he was a genius. Um, and I had every intention to uh, pursue my career at Dimensional. Um, but, you know, life didn't have that in store for me. When I told them I was pregnant, which I knew wouldn't go down too well, I was, uh, I probably shouldn't say this, but it's the truth, I was taken off all projects, yeah. even while I was working there. And I basically sat and did nothing for six months and it was awful. And I would say to my boss, have you got anything for me to do? Like, I'm bored. And they're like, honestly, Alana, well, you know, you're not going to be around for very long, you know, because wow. you're going. Uh, yeah. And and like it was people say, oh, I'd love to go to a job and not have to do anything. Like it was torture for me. Um, and I actually had every intention of going back uh, when I did have my child. Um, but as I think I told you, Stuart, um, yeah. I had a pretty severe uh, pregnancy complication in the very late stages of my pregnancy, um, resulting in me and my son almost dying, which is pretty yeah. crazy, but this is actually what happened. I had a hemorrhage. Um, and you pretty quickly reevaluate life when that happens and very, very close to losing my son. Um, and so, you know, um, yeah, you sort of reevaluate priorities and, you know, I, thought about my job at, at Dimensional and I used to work basically seven to seven. And then when I was a mum, I'm like, hang on a minute, my son's awake from seven to seven. Like when yeah. exactly am I going to kind of get to see him here, you know? So I still was hell bent on going back and I said, look, you know, um, can I come and work part time? Um, they'd probably get fired for saying this, but, you know, this is going back 15 years. They basically said, look, you know, we'll let you come back part time, but, you know, you're effectively pressing pause on your career. Like you'll never be promoted till you come back full time. And so, I, I mean, to me, that was a no-brainer. That's just it's just a dead end, you know. Um, looking back, you know, I'm actually quite grateful that they were honest with me to some degree because, like, they could have kind of not said that and then strung me along, and I would have sacrificed really amazing time that I had with my son, which I'm forever grateful for. And hey. I started, ended up starting my own business and here I am today. So really, I feel like I'm much better off, but it wasn't without a struggle. <laughs> you know what, that's, it's when uh, we had Hermione, my wife, Rachel, she had the same experience. She was a, and I'll, I'll say it, she was, in the, she was a planner at Westpac. She was one of their high performers when she went on mat leave. And when he came back, she ended up being um, just ferried as a backup mm. advisor from, from branch to branch. And I know, you know, being, 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 Sort of on the sidelines watching this happen. It was it was it was unfair and it was mm. it was really it made me angry. So in the end, I I, I said to her, look, come and come and come and work with me in 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 this business. Um, wasn't the best decision. We didn't work well together, but um, it wasn't that long ago. That's the thing, and and the fact that it's it. I mean, in Japanese, they call it the, the window people, but the idea that it would actually happen in Australia and and in in this area is just it's mad. But um. It's it's really common. I mean, when when I ran uh, uh, when I was part of the startup incubator Corporate to Freedom back in 2013, you know, we were targeting teaching corporate employees who we knew that 
a large portion of successful entrepreneurs come out of corporate. We were teaching them startup methodology. And this niche just emerged out of nowhere, which was um, either mums who are expecting or, or corporate uh, mothers who, who basically come out, come out, you know, they're on mat leave and they realized they didn't want to go back. Mm. So it's, yeah, it was a really strong niche, but yeah, I mean, it's accidental entrepreneur, but I guess it turned out for, for the best. A hundred percent and, and really no regrets. And so when, you know, a lot of people ask me about like my journey, you know, and like how, like what a big decision it was to make. I mean, it actually wasn't because I really didn't have any other option, you know? Right. Um, and so I think if I did have an actual an opportunity cost, I mean, I guess I could have got another job, but you know, it's hard when you, you know, you're a new mum and you want flexibility, you can't really ask for that with a new job, you know? Um, so I didn't really have like, I wasn't foregoing anything, it, what mm -hmm. I felt, you know? And I actually think if I, did have to forego, you know, there was some opportunity cost there and I was letting go of a, of a, of a really great job to pursue something. It's, it's actually a much bigger leap than, than the leap that I made, you know? So the, when we started talked about this, cause you, you, you're out of, you're out of corporate, you've made that decision for, you know, maybe you know, a little bit, of, definitely a bit of push in there. Um, but ultimately you made the call. I'm not going to put up with this. I'm going to do something different. I, I want a different situation. I want a different experience. You at that point in time, hadn't done any digital marketing before. I mean, you had a data analyst background, you had the ability to, you know, this was in your skill set. But it's interesting because as I said yesterday, I think if your journey to build into where you are now kind of mirrors where a lot of a lot of maybe advisors are with digital marketing. It's like they start from ground one and go, I have no previous experience in this or I've no, you know, I've no grounding. Would you say that's that's pretty accurate? Totally. I mean, I didn't even know what a Google ad was. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, I mean, there was no one who was more green than me. And, you know, it's funny because, like, un I say to people, like, unless you just have to start. Like, even if what you're starting and where you're starting mm. is not right, you're going to end up somewhere that you don't know yet, that you w don't know exists because you haven't yet started. And so it's so important just to um just to do something to move, not yeah. to be paralyzed and do nothing. Because as you know, I've heard someone say, you know, you can't steer a parked car. And that's absolutely true. Like you just got to get moving. And only because I started to do things and, you know, had failure upon failure upon failure, did I then go, okay, turn left, turn left. Oh, oh okay. This is where we're going, you know? Um, so yeah, I certainly didn't have a marketing degree. I didn't have a business degree. I was a, science person who like built computer systems <laughs> you know? this has come up like when you look at uh paid advertising how much of it is marketing and how much of it is just data i'd say 50 50 actually okay. yeah there's a real there's a massive creative component but there's also a, a decent numerical data analysis component okay and if you had to break down like what are the bits you should be doing uh, and as a data-driven exercise, and watch the bits that you you should be approaching from a from a you know a marketing touchy feely you know sorry not touchy feely emotive perspective. Um, I think like what people um, the problem is with these digital advertising platforms is there's an insane amount of data that they give you, and so therefore there's a confusion and an uncertainty around which data is worth paying attention to and which data is not. And right. so part of my job in helping people is distilling the right things to focus on and what they're telling you and the stuff that is just kind of like, oh, forget about that. That's yeah. not that's not relevant. Okay. But at the end of the day, you can be very, very creative that will make a massive difference to, to the performance of your campaigns. Really, I guess it depends on if you're talking Facebook ads or you're talking Google yeah. ads. Google is a lot more clinical and it's way, way less creative. There's a whole strategy component, but on the Facebook ad and social media side of things, you could be a bad ad manager in so far as, let's say, uh, you know, showing ads to your customers would be a bad Ad, ad manager like what's the point they're your customers already right but if you do that on social the ability to for people to comment on that ad 
and hopefully leave you a lovely kind of comment going, oh, I've used these guys. You know, Stuart was great. He gave me great advice, blah, blah, blah. Suddenly your ad has turned around and it's it's got all this social proof on it. You know, So yeah, it is a way more forgiving ad platform. There's a lot more creative can sort of take on a life of its own. The fact that, yeah. as I said, people can comment, people can share it with their network. They can um, like it and all this. So it kind of, there's a bit a wildfire component to it. Okay. So this is going to be a huge question and push it back if you don't want to, but you've obviously been on what, about a 10 year journey. 15. 15. Okay. Like, can you give us a bit of a sense of how it's evolved, how it's changed, you know, what you've learned so that maybe someone listening to that is at the very beginning, they can cut straight to the, you know, go to the most direct path instead of going down a bunch of dead ends that, that invariably I imagine you have how what has evolved paid traffic or like just what you do because oh, what would i started, do yeah you would have started doing something and going okay that didn't work or that's you know oh god yeah i had so many failures i mean when i started as i said i didn't even know what a google ad was right yeah so i sat down with my newborn son as i said and i thought crap you know what am i going to do now so i thought well, what are my skills so i had really good excel skills because yep. that's what i basically did for financial services so i thought you know i <laughs> Was that? Sorry, I just coughed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so um, I thought, well, you know, maybe other businesses need help with Excel and I can kind of do that while he sleeps or at night. And so, you know, this is going back 15 years ago, I put an ad on Gumtree and for, you know, people who need help with Microsoft Excel and building complex spreadsheets because I used to do the whole, you know, formulas and link to databases and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and to my surprise, people responded to my ad and I actually got like a real decent mid-level client out of it. So I got all excited. I thought, oh, you know, I've got something here. I therefore need a, you know, a website, right? But of course I didn't even know how to build a website. I mean, I built it at uni because I did coding at uni. So I thought I bought the domain excelhelp.com.au. I no longer still have it by the way. Um, and I built a website and to my surprise, uh, no one came to my website. So I'm like, right. oh my God, okay. Nice familiar. Sounds familiar, of course, that hence my naivety. I didn't even, you know, realize I just thought you had to build it and they would come. So I thought, okay, I've got to get traffic to my site. So, you know, there are companies that do this. So I start calling them around and they start giving me quotes for, you know, what it would cost for them to help me, you know, get traffic. And their quotes were coming in. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta be in this business, let alone my stupid <laughs> excel business and so that kind of was my left turn away from you know those kinds of offerings to the digital space but i didn't even know where to begin i had absolutely no idea right. so i had been at college in america and had met a friend of mine who i knew was in the space so i reached out to him and i said help i want to get started with digital marketing i don't have a product to sell what do i do and he goes oh you don't need a product you can sell other people's product for a commission i'm like oh sold so yep. that's called affiliate marketing so he sort of got me on a journey from learning from someone and i tr tried my hand at affiliate marketing and i failed dismally i tell you what i like spent hours and hours trying to get some traction get track it was just a, a dismal failure so oh great back to the drawing board so being the data analyst person that i am um, there was a website called flipper which is a marketplace for people who are buying and selling uh, websites. And yep. because it's a marketplace for it, they reveal their entire business model. So I thought, perfect. I'm going to analyze the listings on Flipper to see the different business models because I, I was just like completely green. And I found it fascinating, you know, people's niches that they were in and all that kind of stuff. And there was one listing for a website which sold for $80,000. I still remember this. And essentially, it was a content website about, I can't even remember, it was like financial stuff, actually. <laughs> and it sold for $80,000. It was making $5,000 a month just from earning revenue from Google ads. And I just thought, oh my God, if I can make $5,000 a month and obviously not have to pay for childcare and still be around for my son, wow. happy happy so this guy was actually selling a report on how he did it for a hundred bucks i'm like dumb i'll buy that so i bought that report and i'll tell you what if he would have told me like in his report to you know jump on one leg and pat your head like i would have done it like what <laughs> I, I followed this thing to an absolute t and in hindsight he was just teaching long tail seo basically 
course, I didn't know what SEO was. I didn't know that that's what it was. So I did it and I built a content website and it actually worked. And so um, I got it to you know a couple of grand a month. And so I thought, oh, great, this is working. Time to build another one. So I had you know hired writers. I had a whole bunch of websites that I built and I actually had a really, really nice business until um so I, this whole premise of like you know make money while you sleep well i worked hard all day to make money while i slept because it was all targeting the united states so i used to wake up in the morning and check my earnings from google adsense it's called and this is you know going back a long long time ago and um until one morning i woke up to check my earnings and there's like no earnings i'm like oh yeah. okay maybe my either my site's down or I've lost my rankings. And so, you know, logging on, I'm like, please make my website be down because that's a logical reason and it's an easy fix. And it was not down. And literally overnight, my business came crashing down. Oh, wow. And so I thought, okay, this is time to get serious and not build some like crappy kind of, you know, SEO business. Um, and so I flipped the equation and then became the person who put the Google ads on con on content websites like like the ones that I had. And so rather than being enemies with Google, because it's always this cat and mouse kind of game with Google, I became friends with Google. So, you know, I used to get invited to events, their training sessions, their, you know, they very much support people who help companies with um, their Google ad campaigns because they get them to spend money, right? Mm -hmm. So I very much became, yeah, and so that's when I kind of took the shift. Nice. That's a, that's a heck of a lot to squeeze into a short space of time. Well, I mean, that is a that that was about four years. Well, okay. no, probably probably three years. Yeah, but I, I in that time, like I was just you know learning about the industry, learning all different yeah. things. I went to some events, and I met there actually a long time mentor, a mentor of mine who's still my mentor, a guy called James Shramko, and oh, yeah. I joined. I joined his community yep. and it was in his community that I would hear about all the different types of, you know, ways that people kind of, or digital advertising. And over and over, people were asking for help with Google ads. Okay. And I'm like, God, oh, what are these Google? And they're all saying, referring to this one person, you know, I'd go talk to this person. I'm like, what is it that she does? You know? So I actually approached her and I said, you know, what is it you do? She told me she, she did Google ads. And I'm like, I will pay you for you to teach me. Will you teach me? Okay. She, she said, no. Wow. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I said, um, thought to myself, well, screw you, honey. I'm going to learn anyway. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I did. So, and then I started just like creating posts in James's community. Um, and then, I, you know, I earned clients that way. And that was really how I started my agency. I would like to say that um, it was very strategic of me to only do Google ads. It really wasn't. I discovered Google ads and I thought, this is my home. This is the perfect marriage between creative and data. I'm friends with Google. I can build a solid, reliable business. I can do really good work for customers uh, that are really happy with the value I'm providing. And it's complicated enough that it keeps it interesting for me but not too complicated and yeah I just I honestly fell in love with it and I just thought I'm not going to do anything else just because I don't want to and it ended up being a very strategic decision by total fluke because I'm actually a really bad business person um, but I kind of became known as like the Google ad person okay and then, yeah that's how that's how it really started so the, the answer might be really really quick it might be because I don't want to but why paid instead of SEO? Because both of them are about doing the same thing, which is generating, you know, traffic from from you know places like YouTube. But you've decided to go down the paying for the eyeballs route rather than the other one. What's what's and this might be useful for somebody who's listening to that and they've been dabbling in both. Why why did you choose one over the other? Oh, it was easy. Well, I did SEO, but for my own um, websites, and it's a lot of smoke and mirror stuff. You're constantly um, it's a cat and mouse game with Google, because Google kind of don't want you to game the rankings. I felt ethically I couldn't do it for anyone else without a guarantee that I can produce a result, you know? So I was, it's sort of a bit like, well, I mean, I, I can try to do this, but I don't know if it's gonna work, as opposed to hand on heart going, 
I know that this is going to work and I can help you. Um, and I would hate a, the first thing that entered my head when I woke up that morning to discover I had no earnings and my rankings disappeared was thank God I had not doing this for clients and I don't have an angry client on the other end of the phone, which they would be completely justified, by the way, saying, where, you know, where's all my traffic? And, and you can't do anything about it, you know. So ditching SEO was personally a very, very easy decision for me. I was relieved to not kind of be in that game. Right. Um, I do, I mean, people might be wondering what are my thoughts on it now. I think it has its place in the world. Um, I'd say to most people though, to start with Google Ads first, because Google Ads will reveal which are the keywords that are worth pursuing with SEO. A okay. common misconception people make is that they start with SEO because they think it's free traffic, although you're paying for an SEO person. It's, it's not free in my book. Plus, they don't really know what keywords to rank for. I mean, you can do keyword research and find high traffic keywords. That's easy but traffic for the sake of traffic is there's no point it might mm. it might not convert you know like to to rank number one australia wide for financial advisor might be useless if you don't service every state the mm. same for a dental practice right so you want to know what are actually the terms that make people pick up the phone and call you and often those terms don't have a lot of search volume but the quality is really good and they're actually quite easy to rank for so this yeah. is one of the things I've found because I've, I've invested some time and money in a, a number of different keyword tools. And honestly, what I do is it's, it's fairly niche, like niche market, niche area, niche, niche topic. And so you can kind of recognize that the volume's not that high. And most keyword search tools, particularly if you're trying to focus outside the US, you know, they're really good on the top level stuff mm -hmm. and the high traffic stuff. They're not that great on the low level stuff. So you kind of find yourself targeting a bunch of uh, keywords that, you know, to be really frank, often people aren't, aren't necessarily going and typing into Google a lot. Couldn't agree with you more. And at the end of the day, it's about the terms that result in people actually taking action. And so, you know, even if you do rank for everything in, in SEO, you've got no way of knowing that because analytics hides that data from you. Mm. So you're kind of in the dark a little bit, you know. So Google ads will tell you all that information that you can then take to your SEO person and go, hey, you know, I want to kind of try and optimize for these, these, these types of keywords. Um, and yeah, then at least, you know, you're, you're spending money on keywords that are worth pursuing rather than generating you a whole lot of traffic that does nothing. Which does, does nothing. Absolutely. Um, I would love to talk about the, the, the agency thing, because that obviously that sounds like it was a big part of what you did and what you focused on. And I think, um, there's a lot of firms out there that will kind of look at this and they'll go, well, I'm, 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 the, I'm the advisor, I'm the rainmaker, I don't, I'm not really the marketing person. So maybe I don't need to learn it. Maybe I'll just go and find an agency who can do it for me. And my experience has been agencies are a bit like, it's been like I don't even know the analogy. It's, it's like trying to tell the difference between ants. They all look kind of the same, but some of them actually do what they say and others, are, you know, to, to use my, the phrase I say is, is sometimes some of the best thing they're, do, they're doing when it comes to marketing is marketing themselves and everything else yeah. isn't great. Like, can you give us a bit of a, an internal view on the agency landscape and how to kind of, how to make sure you don't throw a bunch of money at something that's never going to work? Yeah, it's interesting. I saw a really good analogy of this. I'm certainly not going to claim it my own. It was the guy I follow on LinkedIn and he had a really good analogy of, of the digital agency, which I really agree with. He says, digital agencies are kind of like car deal used car dealerships, okay, where at the front of the organization, you have the salesman and the salesman is there saying, oh, we can do, you know, we can do X, Y, Z for you without really having an understanding of what's actually under the hood of the car right so they promise the world without really kind of understanding the nuts and bolts of how it all works mm. what actual results people are actually getting and you know is their strategy right etc on the other side of the used car dealership is the actual mechanic right who is not really client facing but really kind of understands the, the nuts and bolts of how things work but they're not a great people person and therefore um, they're not 
they're not client worthy. Yeah. So this disconnect between the, the client facing person and the actual person doing the work is, um, is where the problems lie for so many clients because they get promised the world that, you know, they, that company can do X, Y, Z for them. And the, and their salesperson probably actually has really good intentions. Like yeah. there's not, I'm not saying they're deceitful. They just have a lack of understanding and experience of what actually is involved, what are actual conversion rates that are expected yeah. and what's worked for others. And yeah, so that's why I think a lot of people have really, really bad experiences. There also are a lot of really dodgy operators out there. I actually um, used to teach google i used to run full day workshops for sydney uni for a number of years in there like for, to business owners it wasn't like uni students it was their center for continuing education or whatever anyway, the point of my story is i had a room full of business owners you know about once at once a month right and guarantee you there would be at least one person in that room as i said they're all business owners yeah. who had fallen victim to some of the classic pitfalls and shady mm. tactics that these agencies do and the classic one is that the agency sets up their ad account for them and obviously manages their account blah 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 and then if they decide to sever ties with that agency for whatever reason yeah they don't have access to their own ad account so essentially the agency says yeah i'll create an account for you oh, let me take care of it it's totally fine um and then when they leave, they lose their ad account. The agency retains that. Now, that might sound completely benign and you think, well, what's the big deal, right? The problem with that is you lose all that data. You mm -hmm. lose, so the data I was saying before about which are the terms that result in people actually calling you, you don't have any of that information. Your ad account, which is hopefully nicely primed and the pixels being warmed up and all that, kind of, you've got to basically start from scratch Fresh. with a brand new ad account not knowing what keywords are working what ad copy is working which key which strategy to do and it's yeah it's, it's i think it's ethically really wrong you know you should own your own ad account and then give your manager or the agency access to your account which you own and then if you decide to sever ties with them you simply remove them and you retain your own ad account it's it's the same with websites. It's like if totally. um, if someone's building a website and they're whacking it on their content management platform, which I don't care how good it is, it's not going to be better than you know WordPress and Elementor, for example. And then next thing you know, you're paying an ongoing fee. And the moment you step off it, you know you can't access it in the back end. And look, to be honest, that used to happen in financial services a while ago. You know where you'd you'd have a you'd, your advisor would have access to an in-house platform, and as soon as you um, left, if you ever left that advisor, you had to transfer all the funds off the platform, exit fees, you know. Uh, yeah. Tax, yeah, I know. Is there any other ones that you should keep an eye out for? Any, what do you mean? Like, dodgy, dodgy things to watch out for. That's a big one. As I said, I, I had someone in my class who didn't even own their own Google Analytics account. Like analytics is for all the traffic on all <laughs> your website. And it's free. And it's free. It's like, not like totally, you have to pay for it. <laughs> totally. totally. Um, just, yeah, there's just some really, um, just, dodgy operators out there that are just um i don't like i just don't like it a, a yeah. lot of agencies charge a percentage of ad spend personally yeah i never liked that model i just felt like i shouldn't be rewarded for you to spend more i shouldn't be incentivized um so i much prefer a flat monthly fee model where i get paid regardless whatever if you just, you know, and we have like thresholds of ad spend, obviously, because an ad account that spends, you know, $1,000 a month is very different from one that spends 20, but essentially trying to remove um, that. I never Conflict. liked that percentage Conflict, of ad spend yeah. model. Fee for service, in other words, instead of, you know, commissions. Exactly. Um, the one thing I want to ask, and this is really important, because if you're going to go and, and you're going to work with an agency, cost is going to become an issue. And it, it's, like, it's like working with a PR firm. Like there is a certain level below which you know it's just not worth it so in your view if you're working with a, an agency there's two fees that you're probably looking at there's the fee you need to pay them and there's the amount you need to spend in order to actually get results like mm. realistically what do you think uh, is the is a if you're paying under a certain amount you've got to really ask some questions about whether or not the you know this agency a are really doing what they need to be done and b whether they're actually good enough because you know price is sometimes a, is a fact it's not always but sometimes it's a factor in quality right 
Yeah, uh, it's a it's a tough one. Um, I think you know I've had people come to me and say, oh, you know, I can, this agency has quoted me $600 a month or something. And I'm like, okay, good luck with that. <laughs> I honestly, like anyone who is half decent uh, in terms of like they know what they're doing and they generate results, they can really, you know, um, charge a lot more than that because yeah. they produce the results and it's still a no-brainer for that particular client if obviously the value is there. Um so yeah, so under under six hundred bucks a month runway. Oh, red spring. flag. It's red flag material. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And I think like yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really cynical about it, so I, I tend to ask a lot of questions. Actually, one thing, and I apologize, I can't for some reason just to add to our tech woes. It's now decided to turn off screen sharing. I'm making copious notes, and I will share them afterwards. Can you give us? And I I can make these notes on uh, on screen. Can you walk us through the, uh, return on advertising spend, or however you would you know, put the numbers in front of a, a firm to, to, to really identify that if they're going to pay $2,000 a month, what they should be aiming to get off the back of it, for example. Um, look, it's it's tough to answer um, because every business is different. Yep. Um, I often say to people, the success that you will have with advertising online will hinge on really three components. Okay. The first is the traffic you buy, which, you know, I've got you covered there. But the second is how well your website will convince people to contact you. Yep. Uh, and the third is really like what your offering is, you know. Yep. And if any of those three things fall apart, the whole thing falls apart. So I can send the best traffic in the world to your website, but if your website isn't mobile optimized um, and not set up to really uh, convert people, not necessarily to become a client, but at least sell the call to get them on a call that you then, you know, go through their sales yeah. process, then no amount of good traffic will will do that. But okay. the good thing with ads is it will reveal if your website is not doing its job. Yeah. Because you can look through that data and go, I'm getting in front of people who are typing in financial advisor Brisbane, financial advisor you know, Gold Coast, uh, financial planner, right? I know I'm getting in front of exactly those people who are searching for it at that instant. I'm sliding my business card under the nose of them at literally the instant they are searching for it. They are clicking on my ad. Yes, not everyone is going to contact me, but why is nobody? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clearly, there is something that people like, I'm not instilling much trust in people. Maybe I need to incorporate some testimonials they don't kind of think oh i don't really trust these guys you know so it will reveal if there are conversion problems on your website which i believe is relevant for all your traffic rather than just your paid it would it's relevant for seo traffic etc it's the perfect testing ground for for that and yeah. often many businesses and i've done this over the years particularly us based because they're pretty savvy over there that they will buy that data for like two, three months and just tweak their landing page and website mm. constantly to improve the conversion rate before they do like a proper launch because it is the perfect testing ground. So I know it's really hard to put the numbers, but let's say you're generating a thousand um, click-throughs to your, to your site. Mm -hmm. um, and let's say they're a good quality. Let's say you've got your targeting right and that's not the issue. Like what percentage of those should be you know, signing up for something or even, you know, making an inquiry in, in ideally if you're at that point where you're going, yep, I've nailed it. I, I like to say, and I think, you know, averages lie. We, we all know that. But I yep. look for as a, as a baseline at least a 5% click-through rate. So the people, 5% of the people who see your ad actually yep. click on it, of which you're only paying for the people who click. But yep. so you look for at least a 5% click through rate of your ad yep. and then of those people a five percent conversion rate typically okay. though because i've worked with a number of financial services businesses you get a, a higher uh click through rate so above five percent because it's there's all these tactics that we do with you know i'll spare you the technical stuff but we yep. we generally get a better click through rate and if the conversion rate is lower than five percent then we start to imp or i start to help people advising them of changes to make to their landing page to improve that conversion rate okay perfect so impressions number of people you get in front of mm -hmm. uh if you're getting the right or you get in front of the right people you should get five percent click through so a thousand mm -hmm. people you get 50 people clicking through higher if you've you've got you know you're doing it smartly 
of those 50 people, 5% who are clicking through, you should be getting at least, you know, two or three of them uh, every, you know, every month, presumably who are coming through. That's 5%. So 5%, 5% with potentially the variability of that 5% difference between impressions and click through, correct? At the, at the low end, like, you know, any if you're lower than that, then there's problems that need to be fixed. I mean, obviously, you're always looking to improve things. Um, but, yeah, so they're, they're, the, they're the averages. But I've seen higher, you know. I've seen people get, like, much better results than that. They, it is possible. Um, and, yeah, so you know if everyone everyone is different but you know the first question i ask people is how much is a lead worth to you you know and so obviously a lead is different to a customer but once it kind of gets them thinking about how many leads they need to get in front of how many will become clients how much is that client work to yep. you, worth you so you can kind of work backwards from there um i want to i know we're sort of running towards the end of this i, mean, I want to ask a really important question in a second which is in your opinion a firm who's doing this well how many clients should they realistically be be aiming to get from from paid traffic every every month? But I wanted to uh, sort of just give a moment because um, one of the things that's really interesting is you've done the agency thing, and I know that's that's still part of what you do. But your focus now is very much on teaching. And mm -hmm. as I've said to you, I'm I'm as soon as we get a bit ahead, I'm going to sign up for your course because I think it's fantastic. I think the structure of it is amazing, and I know I've spoken to others uh, who've done the course and have, have really rated it. Do you want to tell us a bit a bit? about teach traffic, how it works and um, yeah, like if people are interested in learning more about it, what, where, where could they go to, to get some information on it? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so obviously teachtraffic.com is the website. It's an online community and like portal, which has all my training courses uh, and also I help people online. You know, like it wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was in digital years, but, you know, I still remember when I was starting out online learning and you can do a course and that all makes sense and is clear, but then until you actually doing it it's often like making that leap is hard and I, I remember that so my goal with teach traffic is to help bridge that gap for people in really so that they have the confidence that they can run their ads so that they don't need an agency and I honestly and like I still have an agency so you know I'm not dissing an agency there it still has its place in the world but I genuinely believe and I've helped so many people now if you're spending under five thousand dollars a month on ads like you kind of don't need an agency. Like it's not a full-time job. Once you set it up correctly, there's just a couple of little things you need to do. I reckon it's like an hour a week actually yep. to manage it. And the money that you'd spend in, on an agency, you can spend on your ads. You know, it's not rocket science. You just need to learn a couple of handful of strategies that I know have worked for years and still do continue to work. And so I help people kind of one-on-one -on -one that way and and that's my goal and maybe you get to a point where you spend a lot more and then maybe yeah you do hire an agency but at least below 5k maybe even 10k like it's yeah. like kind of get buying a ferrari to go buy your local milk like you just don't need it you know and that's my what opinion I, what i really love about your approach because it mirrors like um the the what i believe about coaching which is um, you don't just give people the content and there you go, watch it and see you later or, or you do it, you know, or just do a group call once, once, although you do, do, you do do this kind of session. You actually have different structures where you will go in, um, depending on, on what you're doing, and you'll look at the um, so people's ads account and you'll come back and go, okay, this is going well, this isn't going well, tweak this. In other words, it's, it's you actually going in and taking an interest and fast tracking the process. That's, it's, it, at the moment I saw that, I was like, that's, that's the right way to do it, not just give people a bunch of information and, and let them work out work it out the detail on their own exactly and you know that was like my, my pet peeve about doing these courses is you could never ask a question yeah. to the course creator and i always had all these million questions so i guess i'm trying to create something that i would have you know given my right arm for and yeah i people give me i offer free account reviews for people and they give me access to they don't share their login or anything crazy like that we, we you know add me as a manager i screen record me going through their specific ad account going right you're doing this well don't do this anymore do yeah. this instead and kind of steer them on the right path and they like it's like i would have given anything for that so i I, I've been that person before, so I don't have to kind of, you know, cast my mind back too far to imagine that. I, I'm the same. I, like I used to, 
I've been in coaching programs where you just um, you're in this coaching call and there's 50 people in front of you and everyone's asking you a question and you're just like, all I want is well, I just need two minutes. Two minutes. You answer one question. That's yeah. Um, uh, well, the one thing I want, like, let's bring it back to that that question. Oh, um, by the way, it's teachtraffic.com. If you want to go check it out, I think you go to Teach Traffic and then just have a look at the the way it, uh, the way it works. It's it's good and and just to, I'm not just spooking this. We actually Alana and I had a conversation just before Christmas and she gave me some suggestions for our YouTube channel, which we implemented in a small way. And the views uh, the week after we did implement it, they shot up by like five times. And it was just like, oh, okay. And it was such a simple thing we'd be missing out. So let's say for example you're a firm and you go and spend. Let's say let's pick three thousand out, and I know this is how big, but I want to, I want to sort of hone in on what you think the opportunity is. Like, how many clients or inquiries do you think a, a firm can actually generate from from digital marketing if they're, they're, they've got that spend going on? Did you say was it three grand? A yeah, month? It was three, um, three grand. If, if you think we, yeah, I just picked a number out of out of my head, but look, it's a bit hard to say because how much you spend on ads depends on two factors. The first yep. is how much competition there is, and so therefore how much you pay for it. Click because it's an auction, and so obviously yep. if it's more competitive, like if you're in you know Sydney, it's probably going to cost you more than if you're in probably Tasmania. That's the truth. But so how much you you spend depends on the cost per click and the yep. volume the volume of traffic so there might be some people who literally can't spend three thousand dollars a month mm. just because there's not enough traffic for it like they've bought all the profitable traffic there is and let me tell you that's a really common problem like you get oh. if it works for your business you get to a point where you plateau and you've bought all the profitable keywords there are doesn't mean you stop doing that it just means then you've got to add on different things the beauty with this stuff, though, is that you can start really slow mm. and you do find out pretty quickly if it's working or not. Another, um, you know, shady tactic I think agencies do is they say, oh, it's going to take us three months to see if it works. I call BS. Like, it really doesn't. You kind of know pretty quickly. You, you know very quickly if it's working. You also know very quickly if it's not working. Yeah. Getting it to work can be a bit tricky because, as I said, it might be a website issue and all that kind of stuff. But... So going, I want to be mindful to answer your question of if you spend 3K, what are the expected results? Um, you know, like I don't think it's unreasonable to get, you know, 30 to 50 leads a month with that kind of budget, you know, so depending people, on what the leads are. You know? People reaching out and inquiring about advice. That or, you know, signing up for an introductory call or downloading some kind of, um, you know, ebook or something. Yep. That's a good. That's a good number. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously your website has to be set up in such a way that like instills confidence in people and ideally there's a video on there. I think that's a massive area that people don't utilise. It's, you know, like so many people don't ha in the service industry don't have videos and I think that's astounding. Like they, they don't kind of go out from the comfort behind their website and, mm. you know, it's it's a relationship business. You know, I'm in a relationship business. I have a, the second I put a video on my agency website, you can check it out. It's greenarrowdigital.com. Watch the video. It's, I think it's like 49 seconds. <laughs> it's not long, but literally the second I put a video on my website, the conversions increased wow. because people felt like they knew me. This is, you know, and financial services, I know this from my own experience, is a relationship business. They're trusting you with their money. They want to know who this person is, just like a dentist, They're, you know. So, and it's worth yeah. checking out your videos because you kind of see there's, I see a lot of videos in financial services, these overly produced videos that just don't, yeah, you know, they, they don't inspire anything other than what the hell. And then you get these other ones that are people reading, you know, off a of teleprompter. And I think the way that you do it is very genuine. And, and, and you, you, yeah, it's, it, this, I think the, it's not without, I'm not trying to be funny, but it's, it's not massive production value. It's just you no. talking. And that's the key thing. And, I think the fact that it's low production value is actually a really positive thing. Like it's not that polished and people feel like, yeah, they're really natural and I can relate to that person. Yeah. It's, you know, and as long as it instills trust, it's like my husband's a lawyer. Okay. And I was getting his website set up for him. We spent nothing on the website, but we mm. spent like we, we got a, a proper video created for his website. Right. And, you know, the power of that I think is way more valuable than um, than a whiz bang flashy you know website with that looks whiz bang you know awesome 
Awesome. Alana, we could keep going. Uh, I know we could. We could dive into so many areas because every time I talk, even when I catch up for 20 minutes, 20 minute conversation, 40 minutes later, we're chatting about this, that, and the other. Um, we've, we've got everybody still on board. Can you guys do me a, a favor? I, Alex, Andrew, Elizabeth, Glenn, Henriette, uh, Lindell, can you just pop in the chat box? Um, can you just let me know one thing that you've taken from this? Uh, either something that's changed your view or it's reinforced or something you've learnt along the way. I'm happy uh, to so answer any questions if yeah, they want Yeah, and, well. and yeah. I know we've kind of, the tech has been all over the shop. I'm, so I've been a bit nervous about doing certain things. Just pop it in the chat box. We get a bit of a sense. Questions, yeah, feel free to drop those in. But I would love to know, because I know, Glenn, you have done a lot of work in this space. Andrew, I know that this is something, uh, well, anything tech really. Henry, I'm not, we haven't really spoken about this, but I know that um, you're on a growth strategy as well there. So pop it in the box. Elizabeth, I know you're playing in this like, like nobody's business. Uh, Henriette said, what is, uh, it's a question. What is uh, the least amount you suggest uh, on a spend per month on ads if you are launching a small campaign, pay per click? Um, Andrew, I'll just get, yeah, far, far away, I'll ask that question. What's the least amount? Uh, look, you can, I, look, knowing what I know in financial services, um, mm -hmm. they're not cheap clicks, basically. Uh, you're probably looking at around <laughs> five to eight nine dollars a click um and so therefore do the maths in terms of like you know <laughs> let's say five clicks a day you're probably looking at about fifty dollars a day having said that you can be really really hyper strategically targeted with it so you know you probably don't like i've got lawyer clients as well they have like fifty dollar a click <laughs> keywords so it's actually not at the high end, but where you can be really strategic with conserving budget. So a classic example is, you know, people want to show their ads between nine and five because that's when, you know, they want to advertise or mm. that's when they're willing to take a call. Often if we've got like a constrained budget and we're testing things, we might only start the ads at like 12 o'clock because some of our competitors have run out of budget for the day because you said you only set daily budgets <laughs> and we kind of, come in in the end in the afternoon uh, and test some, test some things that way. Um, you can be really strategic that you only advertise on a mobile. You don't even bother desktop or the opposite. If you find actually your desktop people think will convert better, which often does, because uh, I think it's more of a desktop kind of thing. Um, and you could turn off mobile and only do desktop. So the least amount is actually, you know, you decide that it just, it will, I say to people, you, you're you going to pay with money or with time. So it might just take you longer because your ads are going to run out of budget each day to uh, to determine what's working and what's not. But if you've got the time, then there, do it. But you really there, don't need a huge. There is a flaw I've I, I found. I'm, I'm not. I've started playing around with it. Though under a certain level, your Google ads just won't run. And I think that's around about 50 bucks. I think to test it properly, like, I would say fifty dollars a day, yeah. but you know you're not committing to doing that for a year, and maybe you don't run it on the weekends. So it's you know twenty days in a month, fifty dollars a day, um, whatever that math is, a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> but you yeah. could do it for two weeks, and that's you know. Do crit do just before Christmas, do and just before end of financial year, you could. I actually think before. January. January is a, a really good actually, time. Actually, January is really good as well. Yeah. Um, uh, Andrew said it reinforced what he, we're doing with digital ads. Uh, and he's keen to do more and apparently he's reached out for a quick chat. So, oh, and cool. yeah, I'll have a great time, uh, Andrew. And he also said the value of a 15 minute call to him or to us is $1,149.89. So that'll give you a bit of sense, you know, yeah. And that's kind of, it's interesting when you get into the, the detail of it, you, that's the point at which you go, okay, maybe it's worth spending $500 to generate one 15 minute call because, and because next thing you know, well, maybe not 500 bucks, but you get the idea. Um, yeah. Uh, Alex, it's good to be caring conversions across per lead. Glenn said probably give Google a go. It's a long learning curve. I mean, Glenn, have, go and check out uh, Teach Traffic because that middle, um, without sort of trying to you know, lead you towards something, that middle uh, package you've got, I just love the way you've got everything. It's, it's training and there's also this ability to kind of get personal input, which I know, Glenn, uh, we've worked together, so I know, I know that's valuable to you. Henriette said she, uh, she, she liked that you clarified the difference between age. I think that was incredibly useful. Um, Alana, this has been amazing. I knew it was going to be, but it was uh, great to sort of have this conversation. Any final thoughts? Um, no, thank you for having me. And mm. I guess I would say to your um, listeners to not be afraid 
you know i think there's um a lot of fear attached with advertising on google people are worried about there's you know as someone said there's a steep learning curve but you know like anything learning anything new you start small and you grow and you build from that you don't try and launch all these campaigns all at once i've taught so many people now and we just start with a really safe you know one campaign that we you know you know teach you how to kind of check in on things and you, and you grow and build from there so um yeah not to be afraid and i think that in 2024 this is the way business is done i mean i had someone recently join teach traffic who get this is a vascular surgeon i would have thought don't you get clients from yeah. G gps <laughs> <laughs> you know and he's like not anymore people google it i'm like it makes sense actually that makes wow. a lot of sense because that's the first thing you do is what's this pain in my in my left arm yeah so i mean you know this is um yeah this is uh this is the way the world works now and you can at least control your narrative online you know so anyway love it uh if you want to check out more go to teachtraffic.com otherwise once again alana really enjoyed it thank you everybody for joining us and uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you all later. Take care. Thanks again, Alana. Thank you. See ya.